everybody. Welcome to the shop. I've had a lot of interest in my uh, C-frame. This is what I call my C-frame guillotine tool. It comes with a blank die that you cut for whatever you want your die to be. I've had a lot of interest or questions on if I could sell this as a kit. And I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to show you how I put it together, or I would put it together if I didn't have the jigs that I have. So that if you buy one of these kits, you'd be able to put it together. Now, I'm sending one of these kits to our good friend Yamez down at Island Metal Forge. Check him out on YouTube. He's going to be doing another video on it, so you'll get kind of a different pr perspective on how to put it together but he'll probably see this video before he gets his so he he might deviate from it a little bit and show you some different ways of doing it uh, let me give you a close-up here on the parts that I'll be sending you and then we'll get into how I would put it together be right back oops Okay, before we get started, these are the tools that I use in building the C-frame guillotine. First, a couple of uh, vice grips, the type with the wide opening. I've got a Harbor Freight. I think this was about $15 for a big C-clamp. That comes in really handy. And then I've got this other big C-clamp that I will use. A little hammer for uh, tapping things into adjustment. I just love these little ball peens. I use those probably about as much as any other hammer. And a chisel to knock the little balls off of uh, welt spatter. Wire brush to do the same thing. I use this anti-spatter spray to keep them from sticking real hard. Feeler gauge for adjusting squareness. And here's a little square that I had made. You know, any little square will work to make sure you're square. And then a couple pieces of uh, steel for different places you need for clamping to hold things in place. Basically, that's the only tools. Then, of course, a pair of welding from the welder snips. But that's about all the tools I actually used. Most of them, any kind of fabricator should have handy. Uh... Let's get started with the build. Okay, let's start off with the blank die. This is three quarter by inch and a half, seven inches long. I don't think I'm gonna be having any more of them for sale. I used to sell them three for uh, 20 bucks, I believe. If I do, it's probably going to go up in price because I'm going to have to pay to have them cut. Before I was cutting them myself at work and I've changed jobs, I don't have that ability anymore. So this is your die. I was buying 4140 from McMaster Car for the 4140 dies that I was selling. That would be the cheapest way to go probably is just to buy a stick. I think you can get them, I was buying them 6 foot length. I think you can probably get them 3 foot length if you don't need that many of them. Uh, it's not cheap, but uh, this is these are 1018 coal roll, and you can probably get those at any steel supplier in your neighborhood. Okay, here's the C frame. These are the sides that go on here. There's two of those, and your base. When you weld the sides to the base, you want this to be directly over the hole in the base. That way, if for some reason you get some slag or something down in there you can flip it over and use a punch to drive that bottom die out when you're ready to take it out so that hole is right there you can't see it right there where the die is on top of it then you get four of these these are 1.2 inches long these four pieces go one two and then you got a piece in here 
and a piece of behind the bottom die. You can see it right here, or behind the, the lower portion. Those are just to keep these parallel here. And then you have two small ones. They go in the middle here. There's one here and one in the bottom. So there's your four of those and two of those, your sides and your bottom. Now, how do you put them together? Let's get on to that. Okay, let's start with your die, the inch, inch and a half by three quarter die, seven inches long. I don't know if I made it clear in the last part, you get one of these with your, your guillotine kit, but if you want more, you'll have to find somewhere else to get them. Unless I can get them cut for a reasonable amount. And we'll see about that later. You'll see them on my Etsy page. That's where these will be available, is on my Etsy store. Selling through my Etsy store makes life a whole lot easier than to keep track of everything. So that's what I want to sell them through. Right now, I'm lining up everything. I've got two of the face pieces down that go here. So I space them about so. Then I lay my die on it. And then I've got these. These are inch and a half square. But I always use the factory edge rather than the cut edge along here. So that they're the, the same width top and bottom. If I went like that, if my cut was a little off, then they'd be kind of askew. So I got the factory edge on both of those. And then I use this like this. These are just kind of being spacers right now. Make sure you've got this angled portion in the same place. You don't want to turn it around. They will be end up being the top of your uh, guillotine. And I just kind of get them set like this and put these big uh, vice grips, clamp them on there. That's not tight enough. So now you've got it all clamped together. But, you want to make sure it's set in square with the table, not, you know, you don't want to have it skewed one way or the other, because then your front won't be square and your dial will be funny and fitting. So I just take a square, lay it on my welding table, slide it up and make sure this edge is square with the table, and then I do the same thing, well, on the end here. And see, I'm off just a tad. This die has to go that way a little bit. That looks good. And that's still good. So now we're setting square this way with the table. And both of them are square. They're going to be setting the same height. Kind of important to make sure you are, you are square with the earth. And then what I do is I've got somewhere just a flat piece that I can set up here. And we're going to set it up to uh, get this front piece welded onto here. Let me uh, get it switched around and clamped on and I'll show you how I did it. Okay, here's where I'm at. I took that flat piece of steel and put across the top, which would actually be the back of the, the guillotine, and put a C-clamp and clamp the front piece, which is one of these, uh, inch and a half by 2.2, which is just a hair narrower than this is. That gives you a little bit of an edge along here against that uh, C-frame that you to weld in here on both sides and I flushed it up here and got the gap the same on both sides and it's flush underneath so I will go ahead and get everything ready and weld these and then we'll flip it over and 
do the same thing to the bottom. Okay, what I've done was I stacked some pieces up right here so that it's above my sides so that my clamp would sit on those. And I have it clamped up under my welding table so it's pulled down. Those are pulling these inside pieces here. I don't know if yeah, you can see it. Which will end up being flush right here when we weld it together. But I've got it centered right now so it's pushing this top and bottom well, that's actually the bottom and the top uh, pieces that go right here tight against the die with the paper on it. What I'm going to do is tack it there and there and the same thing on this end just at the top edge, the ends, and uh, that'll hold this down and then I'll move these, these pieces here in where they're flush here, top and bottom, in here. And then clamp it again, and then I'll weld the whole inside of here. And then that will have that all done. Let me get them tacked. I've already welded the top and bottom of the front here in place. I use a lot of this anti-spatter spray. You don't have to get that brand. I've had other brands. They all work. It keeps all those little spatter balls from sticking. And then it also leaves it kind of a dark finish. And I think it looks pretty good when it's all done. So I spray everything liberally with that stuff. Let me get these tacked and then we'll move them in. And I'll show you where we're at. And then we'll get it welded all together. At this point, I take a little chisel and my little bulky hammer and just knock any of the little balls that have welded themselves here and throw it in there. They usually come off real easy since you uh, use that, or if you use that spray. And then I take the wire brush and just Rub it. I see another one. Try to get anything cleaned up in there. The hard part's done now. All I gotta do is press this out. You can probably hammer it out and use a punch or use a square piece of steel or something. You don't want to mushroom it out too much before you get it out of there because it'll get stuck. So let me show you how I do it. If you don't have a, like an arbor press or something, you'll have to hammer it out. Okay, we're gonna use the big Pamco 
rest that I got. First we're going to get her to move a little bit. I'm going to raise it up. Put this piece of three quarter inch square stock in there. There's the die, and you'd think that paper would get burnt up more than that, seeing as I was welding right there, but there's what the paper looks like, and you can see it's a little dark. Get back inside where it's a little warmer. <clears throat> Here's my last little attempt at making everything right. The main thing you want is your die to be straight and square with your plate. I checked this before I welded it to make sure it was square. Also, I checked it this way to make sure it was square with the table when I had it face down. Well, welding things pulls things out of square. So the last thing I do is I center this up on here. I've got, I think it was seven eighths of an inch from the C channel or the C frame out to the edge of my base. I've centered it up on the hole underneath there so that that die is straight on that hole. And then I put my square on the edge here, and it was just a little bit leaning that way. So I get a feeler gauge and stick in there to get it to where, and it's kind of tough to do, but I check it here and make sure it's square. These other fingers are in the way. But I'm square now. I'm square with the base. So now I tack it on this side in the four corners, then I'll pull that feeler gauge out and weld all the way around. Got my old dirty welding gloves. Since this is the side that I want up off the base a little bit, but it's where I want it. If you weld on that side, it'll pull it up a little bit more. So I'm going to weld here first. Pull that out. Check it. One last time. Looks good to me. I don't know if you can see it. Because it could pull it that way too. In fact, it has a little bit. Yep. As that weld cools, it drew it quite a bit. Get too crazy with the hammer, you'll break your welds. Next step, get my Harbor Freight clamp. Pull it down tight.
sick that bad that I had forgot to spray Side. I like to set it up so I'm parallel with my front edge so then I can run my hand and keep a straight line. across the front. Last thing I do, I'll go get my maker's mark and put my maker's mark on the front here. Be right back. That's all, all there is to it. Now you just got to cut your uh, black dye into pullers or a butcher tool or uh, tenon making or just a cut off, whatever you need.